Good morning everyone. Let's start by namaskaring, tying up our kundalini and putting ourselves into bandhan. Jai Shri Mataji. We'll start with the um, three great mantras. We'll do Sri Ganesha mantras.
this morning I thought we'd just focus on a talk by Sri Mataji on um, Adi Kundalini uh, Puja, and this is from Austria in 1990. Today we have assembled here to do the Kundalini Puja. Once we had done it in, in India, long, long time back, and this is the first time we are doing this Puja here in Austria. This is the puja of the Adi Kundalini. This is the primordial Kundalini. Can you just do the one? You must have seen <coughs> in the hand of Athena, who is the primordial mother, there is a power which is a snake. in the left hand. It's all right, little far away if you keep it. Yes, it's all right. And the primordial mother has one of her powers which we can say as the primordial Kundalini, is a part of her. Of course, she is beyond that. But she is reflected in human beings as the Kundalini. Now one has to know that to create an incarnation, lot of work has gone into. So many things had to be envisaged. One had to have the vision that when a human being is created, how an incarnation can help. At different levels, we had incarnations on this earth and they were sent with a particular idea that they should achieve a particular type of ascent in that particular time. They were all part and parcel of the primordial mother. <clears throat> and they all had a very powerful Kundalini built within them. But the incarnation of this Kali Yuga is very complicated. First it had to be worked out what would be the situation in which this incarnation would be born. And what sort of encounters this incarnation would have. So the major propelling force you can say, or the major work had to be done in the incarnation to create a very strong spinal cord so that it could bear the primordial Kundalini, which is responsible for doing this 
great work of transformation. Now this Kundalini, which is the primordial one, has all the powers built in of redemption, of ascent. But apart from that, to be born in this Kali Yuga, one had to know what sort of people one has to face and then how to bring them round to the understanding of Sahaja Yoga and to the understanding that they have to have their ascent. So there are many sources of energies and knowledge which are to be used because it's a very complicated world in which the primordial Kundalini had to work. It was not a simple thing like people coming to Himalayas. They were already clean people, very desirous of getting realization. They didn't have all kinds of inhibitions and conditions and ego. They were completely surrendered and after a great amount of penance they would arrive. So to raise their Kundalini was not such, not such a complicated thing. So not only that, the primordial Kundalini had to give assent to people, but it had, she had to also understand what sort of people are there. But why don't you take out the child, what's the matter? I think open the windows, perhaps the children are feeling hot. Normally children don't cry and listen to there's some problems. You have to be careful. So all the aspects of human beings on the random uh, movement of human beings, all their adventures and enterprises were to be understood. by the Incarnation. To communicate with the primordial Kundalini. I know also such a person had to be a Mahamaya so that she or he, whatever it is, has to behave in such a manner that nobody should feel 
frightened or should feel something disturbed. So this Mahamaya Swarupa had to be taken. So the Adi Shakti's work is double fold. First is to know about the present, the way the people are, their cultures, their styles, their conditionings, their egos, everything, how they behave. Though the Adi Shakti is unaware of all these things, because she doesn't know this is human adventure. She doesn't know how far they have gone. And what do they see? What do they dream? What are their ideas? And the another work is of the Kundalini. So she is divided into two parts. One is the Kundalini and another is the Sahasrara. So Sahasrara has to supply all the material, all the uh, information to the Kundalini. And then the Kundalini has to work out. Of course, as you know very well, there are deities who are built in everywhere, in the Sastrara also, in the whole body, and they are the ones who communicate whatever has to be communicated properly. But it's a very complicated work, extremely complicated. So this primordial Kundalini acts uh, for the collective samashti as well as for the individual. Now supposing you go to a place like, say, an airport, so you start absorbing the heat of the people. Then the perspiration starts and you have to see that all this work is done through your body. Or at the same time, if there's somebody, individual, who has some problem, also can be absorbed and can be corrected. So it acts on both the levels, one on the individual and one on the collective, as they say, samashti and vyashti. <coughs> and simultaneously is connected. Now the attention, which is the power of the brain, we can say a power of sastara, also has to be extremely deep, alert, and intelligible. All this work had to be done to create this incarnation of primordial Kundalini and the Sahasrara. So many mechanisms were used, so many uh, types of wiring was done as you do it like as you try to fix your computer to make it the most efficient one. In the same way, a lot of work was to be put in. And first you had to watch human beings for two thousand years, how they have been behaving, what they have been doing, and now what sort of human beings are there? Every nation had different conditionings. Every individual had different conditioning. It's a very difficult work. And one had to have really the ocean of patience, inexhaustible ocean of patience. And that's how This work of Sahaja Yoga, the whole stage was set in. As you have put the stage here, 
You have done a marvelous work. And uh, looks very nice, beautiful, everything is there. But the stage for Sahaja Yoga was a very complicated one, extremely complicated. Because the work was so dynamic, so subtle, at the same time so loving, so affectionate. All the intelligence of the Divine was used to manufacture this incarnation. And to get a human realization was also very difficult. You had to be born like an ordinary human being, to live in your family like an ordinary person. You had to find out through entering into everybody's kundalini what was wrong with them, what was the mistake, how you could use the permutations and combinations of their chakras to give them amas realization. It was a tremendous task and that had to be done with the sastrana. But it has been achieved. All these great plans of the Divine and everybody's detailed working and bringing everything to a par excellence level was really tremendous. I myself surprised at myself <laughs> and amazed how I could really get so many people in Sahaja Yoga. I didn't expect, but it has worked tremendously because of the cooperation of human beings also, otherwise it would not have been possible. Now when you do these pujas and all those things, you please those deities, make them happy, because they have done so much work is your gratitude for them, that they have worked so hard with such diligence, with such precisions, that today we have been able to achieve this great drama of Sahaja Yoga. Those who are Sahaja Yogis perhaps do not realize what is the great work done in the background and how much time it took to build up the whole thing, to bring it to this level of perfection. <clears throat> so the primordial Kundalini, which is reflected in you as your Kundalini, also is of the same nature. And it works in the same way. It uh, rises, gives you Self-realization, gives you the powers. But after all, one has to know it is a reflection. And the reflection, to make it truthful, real, you have to look at the reality first. How the real one, the 
real Kundalini, real primordial one, how it acts, how it works. If you start thinking about my Kundalini only, immediately you'll become silent, no question. You cannot think, just you'll become silent. Just think of any one of my chakras and your chakras will be all right. But you have to have that depth, you have to have that much protocol, you have to have that much right. Just to that. Don't have to do anything. Just you have to think of my chakras. Just think about my Kundalini. That's sufficient. But you have to develop that surrendering situation. Even now there are Sajogis who doubt. They have seen the work, they have seen everything, still they doubt. And they yield to people who are on the periphery. And there are Sajogis who still sticking on to many things, they cannot change. They haven't got yet that courage to change themselves. I don't say that you have to change anything outside. But when time comes, you might have to change also. So you should be prepared. How much we are courageous, that is to be weighed and to be found out. Uh, unless and until you have full courage, you cannot establish Sahaja Yoga. Uh, in a quick way. When you are using your own Kundalini, you have to know that the Kundalini that is your own has problems. She herself has gone through various ages and stages and she herself is sometimes very much hurt, very unhappy and very weak and then she cannot rise. So if you want that this Kundalini that is your own, that is your own mother, has to give you all the nourishment and everything, you must learn, first of all, foremost thing, how to surrender to reality. So if you learn how to surrender to the primordial Kundalini, then your Kundalini is immediately strengthened. It's like this, supposing you have a stone <coughs> and uh, you try to put anything uh, on it, it won't reflect. Then you improve, it's a good, still nothing will be reflected. Then you paint it, some reflection will come. Then you have the glass, the glass won't reflect. But if you use some mercury and make it a mirror, it will reflect. But still it may not be the perfect mirror. So this is how the kind of a reflector you are, on that depends the kind of a reflection you get and the kind of personality you have. So there should be no aim as such but to be dissolved into the reality should be the desire within you. Let's not just collectively meditate silently. We can put our attention on Shrimataji's Kundalini.
real nun to the last of the three great <coughs> mantras. Om Twami Vasakshat Shri Kelki Sakshat Shri Sahastara Swamani Mokshat Pradaini Mataji Shri Nimala Devi Namo Namaha Thank you very much for joining this morning. In your own time, you can just type your kundalini, put yourself into bandha. Thank you everyone for joining.